Hey guys, it's me Papuya. I'm back, bringing you a raid guide today. Uh, somebody commented a couple videos ago uh, that they were looking for a mid-game raid guide. You know, people bring a lot of raid guides focused on Ultima 7 and very late-game Ultima 7, you know, higher difficulties. Uh, but a lot of us are stuck in sort of an Ultima 6, somewhere in Ultima 6, or uh, maybe like 30% completion of Ultima 7, difficulty 1. I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the teams I use, some of the best teams you can use for these modes, and some of the teams that are, the best teams are not is easily accessible so I'm gonna give you three really good teams I'm gonna give you like three not not so good teams uh, but they're pretty accessible you know those really good teams kind of hard to get your hands on uh, but the the not so good teams are gonna be pretty easy to get um, so I'm gonna talk about three uh, really good teams first uh, so the first really good team is a classic team in this game BKT or best Cree team so this is Thanos Rocket Raccoon Star Lord Minerva and Groot that's not the appropriate order. You'd have to Google the order. The order is actually very important to this team because the team is very reliant on energy flow between Star Lord and Thanos going off to Rocket Raccoon, so Rocket Raccoon could use his ultimate. Uh, you know, again, again, again. You know, the whole idea is give energy to Rocket Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon uses ultimate kills a ton of enemies, Thanos then gives a ton of energy to Rocket Raccoon, Rocket Raccoon uses ultimate again, kills a ton of enemies, Thanos gets energy, gives it to Rocket Raccoon, you know, ch channel that through and through, Rocket Raccoon, or er, Groot, helps boost the DPS of Rocket Raccoon and gives them some survivability, and Minerva helps to fuel them uh, with a lot of healing, and then Star-Lord also uh, sort of helps give energy out to the team, uh, so it's sort of a really big team right there, really cool team, uh, you know, and that's a bit of a classic team, now the only problem is Thanos now nowadays the only problem with uh, Thanos on this team is he sort of goes with black order but you don't use the black order for raids so you can still keep Thanos on this team for raids see you don't have Thanos you can use vision instead of Thanos I hear people sometimes switch out vision only problem is you lose a lot of energy generation for raids um, you know he it's you still really want to have Thanos on this team he's really important but I know some people do run BKT without vision it's just suboptimal for raids the team will still function pretty well for PvP with vision in place of Thanos, uh, but for PvE, uh, Thanos is really irreplaceable. Uh, so that makes this team a little difficult to farm out because as you can see right here, Thanos, they do give him out frequently, but he is stuck in Nexus 8-9, so oop, you're probably not gonna get that. And Minerva is a premium orb exclusive character. Uh, so two, uh, I wouldn't say Minerva is critical, she's pretty helpful though, uh, but Thanos, really critical member. Um, you know, he's stuck behind uh, the, the really late campaign mode, but uh, Thanos, if you do happen to get him, not only does he work really well with that BKT team, uh, but he can go with pretty much any cosmic team. So say you have Guardians of the Galaxy really built up, like me, um, you could switch out Drax for Thanos, and then Thanos could generate a bunch of energy. You know, really the core of that team is Rocket Raccoon getting energy from characters like Star-Lord and Thanos, and then using a ton of AoEs, um, sort of keeping that energy chain going. Another team I wanted to talk about is the Asgardians. Asgardians are really cool for Raids. Um, they're a really good team for Alliance War, um, but uh, specifically Alliance War defense, but they also do really well in raids uh, because they have some sustainability. I don't see a lot of people talk about as Guardians. They're a team I use a lot in raids, uh, specifically because of this stuff you'll see in their passive right here. So as you can see, on turn she'll heal herself. Uh, all the as Guardians, as far as I know, have this little passive. If you look at Loki right here, um, on turn he'll heal himself. Uh, so kind of an interesting little passive thing they have here. I don't see a lot of people talk about this, uh, but this is really awesome for the raids. It gives them a ton of sustainability. Um, you know, not only is it a really, it's just a strong team in the first place, really good for Alliance War defense, uh, but then they're also really helpful for raids because of that, that heal and that sustainability they have. And what's also cool is Thor's passive, uh, where he sort of gets charged up when the Asgardian allies get hit, and then he does a big sort of hammer slam. This works great because there's a ton of enemies, so a ton of attacks getting um, sort of dealt to the Asgard team, so Thor gets a lot of chances to charge up. Uh, this team just works really well uh, for raids. Um, now, the only problem is I consider Hela a somewhat critical member of the team. Uh, you know, Hela's just a really strong character. A lot of uh, debuffs she can spread to the whole team, where she spreads negative effects with her ultimate. Uh, and so stuff like that I just think and having the undead as guardian is pretty critical too um, so a lot of important stuff in Hela's kit and again Hela is a relatively late game farm uh, unless you get out of an orb or something like that so that's just that's one of the big problems with this team is Hela is somewhat difficult to farm uh, so is you know it's sort of a bummer if you don't have her for the team you know Heimdall and Sif are kind of garbage 
Thor's good, but he really is only good because he he works off of the Asgardian team getting beat up. And then Loki is sort of like like trickster. He makes everyone invisible, you know. And not the kind of DPS coming out from him. Uh, Hela, I really I, I I think the Asgardians struggle a lot without Hela. So that's the problem you run into the Asgardians team. You need Hela. Next up, I'd argue the best raid team in the game is the Symbiote Spider-Verse team. Now, if you're watching this in the future and there's more Symbiotes, get rid of Spider-Man and Miles Morales and put Symbiotes in there. There's probably going to be more Symbiotes eventually, but right now we only have three. If there's more Symbiotes, put the other Symbiotes on the team. Uh, but right now, it's a team with uh, Symbiote Spider-Man, Venom, Carnage, Spider-Man, and if I scroll down here, uh, Miles Morales is on this team. Uh, Miles Morales and Spider-Man are useless. Don't even bother with them. They're literally just there to, I don't know, who cares about them? Really, what's good about this team is Symbiote, Spider-Man, Venom, and Carnage. And the most important member is Symbiote Spider-Man. So Symbiote Spider-Man, uh, really the big thing he does right here is just passive in raids. When a negative effect is applied, he heals the team. And then uh, the Symbiotes get plus 100% drain and he gives them health and all kinds of stuff uh, so the passive is what's really important with symbiote spider-man um and then he just essentially turns the team into like this unstoppable debuff applying machine uh what's also cool venom his passive right here he can apply well he heals himself uh, but he'll also apply defense up to the team so he helps with survivability um so essentially the way this works is you're going to spread debuffs with venom um and then uh symbiote spider-man is going to heal the team a ton and carnage also has a really cool passive right here so when and energy drops below 25% health. He'll fill the speed bar with 20% for self and all symbiote allies. Uh, so this team just works really well together. That trio of uh, Venom, Carnage, and Symbiote Spider-Man just really are monsters in raids. Also Dark Dimension. Uh, so this also sort of works to help out if you eventually want to move into Dark Dimension. The problem with this, um, this team, the anchor is Symbiote Spider-Man. You don't get the healing without Symbiote Spider-Man, and Symbiote Spider-Man is currently a milestone character, and there are no milestones for him right now. Uh, so if you have Symbiote Spider-Man, drop everything, farm him out, do a, do a Symbiote team. Uh, but if you don't have him, uh, you can't really do this Spider-Verse team. So next up, I'm going to talk about three other teams you can use. Really, all these other teams are just pretty much on the same level. Uh, I just think they're relatively easily accessible. Um, you know, a big thing you want to look for in a team is a team that's not focused on one big burst of damage. Like uh, Power Armor, they're focused on debuff with Ironheart, and then everyone pull off these crazy AoEs. That doesn't work for PvE because once you pull off those AoEs, you're like, what do we do now? What do we do? We have nothing else to do. Um, you know, Brotherhood, I, I sometimes use them for like one node um, if I'm going against like shield or something like that. Uh, but again, Magneto pulls everyone in. Juggernaut does his charge. Uh, Pyro puts out his ultimate. After that, you really got a lot of downtime before you get to do something again. So when you're picking these teams, you really got to be careful about um, those kind of things and making sure you don't have like these really big turns and then nothing to do for the a uh, couple of turns in between. Uh, so one of the teams you can farm out is the Wakandans, Black Panther, Okoye, uh, Shuri, and Baku, and Killmonger. Uh, the only problem with this team is they are kind of garbage. They're not bad. Um, they're they're good for raids. Um, and some of them are good, Shuri and Black Panther. The only problem is uh, they're just not that good. They're not that good. They're just not really good characters. Uh, so you could farm out that team if you happen to have them well built up. Not a bad team to throw into raids because the, they were designed for raids. They're just not that good of characters. So, you know, don't don't expect too much from them. Another team you could do is AIM, Scientist Supreme, Graviton. I, I like AIM Researcher. Um, I like to use AIM Monstrosity and then Shield, and then AIM Security you need to have on the team. AIM Security is very important. Um, I know a lot of people like AIM Assaulter. <sighs> I just don't feel it. A lot of people like Aim Assaulter. I understand why they like Aim Assaulter. Um, you know, right, if we scroll down to uh, right, right about here, uh, what they like about Aim Assaulter is this passive. Uh, of course, it gets much better than this, but it fills speed bar for the team. Like, I don't know, what is it, like plus 20% speed? I just don't think that really plays out, you know, plus 20% speed bar. I don't think in the grand scheme of a battle, you know, I, I, it'd take five turns for you to get one free turn out of that. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm not, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I don't like Aim Assaulter, but I just want you guys to know people do like Aim Assaulter. I personally use Monstrosity, Researcher, and Security with Graviton and Scientist Supreme, uh, but you could use anyone you want right there. Uh, all those minions are pretty good except for Infector. Don't use Aim Infector. Uh, but really, this team thrives on Scientist Supreme. Uh, she applies a ton of debuffs to the enemy team. 
provides a ton of healing to your team plus there's some revive chances um so you know this team can do very well in raids plus graviton he can extend debuffs uh works really well um this this aim team and then finally, I'm going to talk about actually two teams because I think these two teams are actually really similar. Uh, so this is going to be the Kree team with Ronin uh, and then uh, the, Kree, the the minions, except don't put Cyborg on the team. You could put Cyborg on the team, but really Cyborg is sort of best off with characters like Ultimates. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to do like a generic uh, basic Kree team with no Minerva or anything like that because uh, we're assuming you don't have Minerva because if you did have Minerva, you'd probably be going for the best Kree team, uh, which would be the Rocket Raccoon, Star-Lord, Minerva, Thanos. Thanos Groot team. Uh, but so assuming you don't have Minerva, we can use the not best Kree team, uh, Ronin and his minions. Um, and they do pretty well because they, they just have a lot of synergy. They're a little bit out of the meta nowadays, but they're still a competent team. Ronin, Ronin and them sort of have a lot of energy flying around, um, just some solid uh, stuff in their kits, a lot of regeneration, a lot of sustainability. The only problem is I think they're lacking in DPS. I think they have some nice sustainability, but the DPS isn't quite there. Nick Fury and Shield minus Trooper is a um, you know a very similar team to Ronin where they have a lot of buffs flying around, a lot of sustainability. Again, I think they lack a little bit in DPS, uh, but not a bad team to use for raids, and I did use them a lot. Uh, Nick Fury as a whole is just a really helpful character for raids uh, because of his special right here. I think it's really good. He'll heal um, his team uh, if they're shield minion allies, but really what's cool is he gets to spread all negative effects or positive effects on himself to all allies. So if you, you this can work really well. You could probably theorycraft a bit with that. You know, say you pair him up with somebody like Captain America um, or Black Widow. Captain America, Black Widow, apply defense up and speed up to the team. Nick Fury then spreads it um, you know stuff like that that's kind of cool um, there's some there's some little theory crafting right there with Nick Furious kit so I hope this helps you guys out um, you know the, the problem with those three best teams the Asgardians uh, the symbiotes and that BKT a little hard to access some of those characters so if you don't have them focus on teams that don't have a lot of burst and they're these teams that are really good at sustain whether that's aim whether that's shield whether that's Kree or whether that is Wakanda. Well, let's see next month's patch. Uh, I believe Beast might be coming next month. He's been rumored, and Beast is said to be like a healer for the um, X-Men in raids. So we may have another really competent team for raids next month once we get Beast. We'll just have to see. Uh, let me know what your favorite team to use in raids and what difficulty you are currently in in raids. And with that being said, what do I really know? Because I am only an 18-year-old. I hope everyone can have a happy and healthy day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Signing off, everyone.